it's always hard to see players have these major injuries right in the pivotal moments in the middle of a Super Bowl. And unfortunately for Odell Beckham Jr., his mechanism of injury points to a lot of hallmark features for an ACL anterior cruciate ligament injury. So let's dive into those during this video. Hey guys, welcome back to Clinical Physio. In this video, we're going to be analyzing the injury sustained to OBJ, Odell Beckham Jr. during Super Bowl 56 last night between the Los Angeles Rams and the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, unfortunately, a lot of the early news stories regarding this injury might suggest that there's been an injury to the anterior cruciate ligament, the ACL of Odell Beckham Jr.'s left knee, which he unfortunately has already injured in 2020. So let's start with some anatomy and have a look at this injury in detail. Okay, so using our clinical physioanatomy model, let's take a look at the ACL. So we can see here that we have the left knee as the one that OBJ injured. And if we remove the patella and if we highlight the ACL, we can see that it runs right through the center of the knee joint. Now, if we look at things from a side view, we can see that it originates at the lateral femoral condyle and it inserts onto the anterior surface of the tibia at the intercondylar eminence. Now, if we go ahead and look at the ACL from the back, we can see that lateral femoral condyle attachment, and we can see beautifully how it runs right through the center of the knee. But really critically, we can see how it runs from a slightly lateral position to a slightly medial position from the lateral femoral condyle to a slightly medial position on the intercondylar eminence. That running from lateral to medial is extremely crucial to the main mechanism of injury, especially when we look at OBJ. Let's see why. So now let's look at the injury. So here we can see OBJ running with the ball in midfield. He's about to catch the ball. And there's a couple of things that happen as he plants his left foot right about there. So first of all, he's decelerating. He's running at heavy speed and then suddenly he has to decelerate to catch the ball, turn and run in the other direction. Deceleration positions are extremely vulnerable for the ACL because the ACL has to stabilize the knee whilst the body is still moving forward. So deceleration is a key factor here. Second of all, there's no one around him. It's a non-contact injury. And we know from the evidence that at least 70% of ACL injuries in a sporting environment are non-contact twisting injuries. Now let's take a look at the actual position of his leg. We can see that the ankle is everted and looking as if it's going towards the touchline. However, we can see that his left knee is actually angled towards the corner, towards the end zone. And therefore, we have this situation where his planted foot is trying to maintain his weight going laterally, but his knee is moving in an internally rotated or valgus direction. And that positioning of a planted foot with an internally rotated or valgus knee is what puts a real strain on the ACL. And if we look at the anatomy just a second ago, we know why. If you remember that the ACL runs from a slight lateral to a slight medial position, it means that when the knee is internally rotated, it's going to elongate and really stretch that ACL. And that's why it's such a vulnerable position, this external rotated foot, but internally rotated knee. Now, if we run things through with the second angle, we can see this buckle point. So as we run it through just here, we can see this buckle point. Let's go through that again. So as he runs forward, buckle, and you can see that the knee almost jars itself. And that's the exact moment when the tibia moves slightly forward. And if we can see it, and if we can break it down really closely, we can see that there's a slight point on the footage where the tibia appears to be moving forward of the femur. And of course, the job of the ACL is to prevent excessive anterior translation of the tibia on the femur. Unfortunately, we might be able to see from this footage where that tibia does end up moving too far forward, which is what's going to strain the ACL too much, which can lead to the injury. So if we run through quickly the key subjective signs for any patient who you suspect has an ACL injury, number one, deceleration force. Number two, non-contact. Number three, in particular, if they can recall that valgus mechanism of injury. Number four, if they feel as if they are unable to play on, that's potentially because the stability in their knee has become so compromised that they're unable to walk it off, but also crucially because they have a lot of swelling. 
The ACL is a very vascular structure. It has a lot of blood supply. So when you see someone injure their ACL, if their knee swells up incredibly quickly, this could be because the ACL has ruptured and therefore blood has leaked everywhere into the joint. So for those two reasons, number one, the instability, but number two, the major swelling, you want to look to see if the player was able to play on. And of course, if you're on the pitch and if you're monitoring the player afterwards on the pitch, do you see that ballooning of their knee? Now, the other key thing to consider is if your patient hears a pop during their mechanism of injury. This isn't always the case for ACLs, but if your patient does recall that they have heard a pop, then you need to consider that they have had an ACL injury until you can effectively rule it out. Now, we're less than 12 hours since the end of the Super Bowl, but already a lot of NFL players have come out questioning the use of the artificial surface that last night's game was played on. And we've seen from some evidence that there is an increased risk of ACL injury when playing on the artificial turf. And it's considered that this is because of the increased friction between the foot and the ground, meaning that when someone like OBJ plants his left foot, it gets stuck in the ground rather than allowing it to change position quickly and accommodate the position of his left knee because it gets stuck in the ground in that planted foot position. It means that the knee drifts off and can cause that vulnerable ACL injury. OK, so what else do we need to do in order to diagnose this ACL injury? Well, the subject of history is incredibly important. So you need to listen out for those different factors that we mentioned during this video. And if you hear a lot of these, then there's a high index suspicion for an ACL injury and you should definitely get it investigated. But also there are some objective tests we can do, such as the Lachman's test and the anterior draw test, which look to see if there is a lack of end feel when we're testing the stability of the ACL. But also they look for increased laxity when the tibia is translated anteriorly on the femur to see if that ACL is indeed intact. So the other objective test we can perform is the pivot shift test. This is where the knee is guided into that internal rotation valgus position to mimic that mechanism of injury that OBJ demonstrated to us to see if the knee does indeed buckle, which is where the tibia is unable to control that anterior translation on the femur. So if you suspect that your patient has had an ACL injury, the first image investigation they may have is an x-ray. And that's because of the degree of swelling that may present or perhaps inability to weight bear means that we should be ruling out a fracture. But otherwise, the key investigation to be done is an MRI scan, which is going to look at that soft tissue and in particular allow us to see whether or not the ACL is intact. Now, at this stage, we don't know the full story for OBJ, whether he has just sprained his ACL or whether he has unfortunately re-ruptured it, as we know that he ruptured his left ACL initially in 2020. Now, if you're working with these professional athletes in a sporting environment, you may commonly find that they will go on to have reconstructive surgery of the ACL. And that's because if they don't and the ACL remains not intact, the knee is incredibly vulnerable to further injury, particularly meniscal injuries. Now, we can see from the research from Hagmeier et al. that the rate of meniscal injury as a secondary issue to an ACL injury is relatively high at 16%. However, we can see that that figure reduces significantly to only 7% when ACL reconstructive surgery is completed within six months. If there is a delay to this process, we can see that meniscal injury rate increases significantly to 33% if there is a delay in ACL reconstructive surgery. And unfortunately, when this does happen, the meniscal tears can be incredibly significant, big tears and sometimes unrepairable tears. And therefore, you can imagine that if a sporting athlete has this situation, it's going to be very difficult for them to get back to their sport. So, guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, we'd be so grateful for your support by smashing that like button. But otherwise, we look forward to seeing you again really soon right here on Clinical Physio.